So, Sue Spice, uh, tenant chair for the Castlevale Community Housing. First of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, and uh, for those who are tuning in now and uh, are not familiar with uh, Castlevale and everything that went on uh, over a long period of time in, in Castlevale, just, just, just paint us the picture of uh, where Castlevale was at the start of regeneration, going back some nearly 30 years, and the journey it's been on to, to get to where we are today. Um, Castle Vale was probably in a bad place. There was a lot of unemployment, bad health, poor standard of accommodation, very little investment in the area as regards accommodation. Um, the idea of the Housing Action Trust was bought. Um, I think the government has set, I think it was five across the country, and Castle Vale was put forward as one of those. And uh, we were selected that, yes, Castle Vale would have it. So it was then taken to tenants on the Vale who, well, actually, probably everybody at the time, um, just to go along and hear what it was all about. Uh, we turned up to a meeting at St Cuthbert's Church where a feasibility study was given to us as to how what would happen if we went for it. And then we were told at that time, you know, if we go for it, it's up to you now as residents of Castle Vale to steer where you want it to go. A uh, few of us were there, became, eventually became the community action team. And from there on, we then started working with the residents of Castle Vale the way forward. Uh, and uh, the main idea was was to uh, get as many tower blocks knocked down as possible at the start. Uh, it was just to make better standard accommodation, really, because the accommodation was bad. And that was one of the that, that was one of the things that we wanted to get people down on the ground. Um, originally, Farnborough Road flats were going to be kept and refurbished, but then it became through financial reasons. It was decided they would all come down. Uh, the masonette blocks were uh, refurbished to make them better because they were very drafty and damp and the rest of it. Um, so it was, it was basically we presented it to tenants as to what would you like in your area. We had lots of planning for real days where tenants could come or residents could come along and have a look or say what they wanted in their area. And from there on, lots of plans were brought, brought forward. But we listened to the tenants right from, well, not tenants, it was the whole residence, because it was the whole of Castle Vale. It wasn't just, um, although it wouldn't affect the homes of homeowners, but it would affect their environment where they lived and the rest of it. It became obvious that it wasn't just housing. There was lots of, there was health, unemployment, uh, education. There's the school, the, the, what was the comprehensive school there, was sort of very low on figures in there. So it was looking at everything, it, it became obviously it wasn't just housing, it was everything for the benefit of the residents of the Vale. And to put it into some kind of context as well for people listening to this who, who don't know, it, mm. it's the largest estate in Europe, isn't it, Castle Vale? I mean, that's no, that's no small task to regenerate an area like that. No, it, it, I'm not sure of the site. I just, it wasn't a small task. It was, it was, a, it was a big task. There was lots, as I said, it wasn't just... Um, it wasn't just the homes, the homes were substandard. It was, it was everything. Um, it was, there was crime. I think that was a big thing. There was crime on here. Uh, the education standards were very low, employment. There was lots of things that needed to be looked at. So it was done in a whole. It wasn't just, obviously you need a decent home to live in, but equally you need to be good health to enjoy it and have a job to pay the rent. So it was, mm -hmm. it was lots of other things that actually became apparent that it wasn't just housing from day one. No, and, and the kind of the aesthetics of, of it as well, because uh, yeah. for many people visiting Birmingham on the train, if they're heading into uh, Birmingham New Street mm -hmm. from, from the north, Castle Vale's yeah. the first Part of Birmingham you go through that, that, yeah. that you go past isn't it so it was important um just for you know we could have ended up with a like the Queen Victoria saying when we're not amused about going into the the, uh, the black country it was it was important from that point of view that the regeneration needed to take place yeah I, th I think from I think from a tenant point of view, as a tenant I've been a tenant on here for a long time to me it was the homes that were more important it was it was the fact that people were living here 
that that was the most important thing. It was making sure that tenants had a nice, a decent home to live in because it, it had been, we had been neglected. We had very little money spent. I mean, I lived in a tower block at that time and I'd been in there for about 17 years. In all that time, nothing was ever spent in there. I never saw any refurbishments, any painting or anything. Um, I'd go out to work in the morning, taking newspapers and put in the lift because there'd be urine in the lift. It was that bad. People would throw stuff off balconies. It, it was just a bad place. It's just not a good place to live. I've heard stories about the crime. I never actually witnessed it, but I've heard people wouldn't come onto the estate because they were frightened. So you hear whether it's just gossip, I don't know. But it, it was it was not a good place to live. It wasn't. So. True, true story. True story. Um, yeah. Summer of uh, 2000, I'd just finished college doing a media studies mm. thing and I wanted to get into uh, doing some radio and I found an advert in the evening mail at the time for a radio training course at what is now Switch Radio, is mm -hmm. Vail FM. Yeah. And uh, I got accepted onto the course and it was something I really wanted to do, I was really excited about it. And uh, my mum said, um, where is this place? I said, it's, it's Castle Vale. We lived on the other side of town. We lived, we lived sort of Northfield way. Mm. And she said, you don't want to go there. Mm. And I, I said, why? You said, it's Castle Vale. You just don't go to Castle Vale. It, it's a no-go area. Mm. I mean, that was nearly 20 years ago. Yeah. And I'm still coming, apart from lockdown, obviously. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've never had a problem with any people in Castle Vale. I've never seen any, any crime. I've, we've reported on incidents because we've done it for news purposes mm -hmm. here on Switch Radio and, and when Tiber Mail was around at the time. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, the, the job that's been done in, as I say, near, near 30 years, it, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of people were dedicated. A lot of people got involved from day one. We, what we did, we visited all the other hats in the country to learn from them, so that we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. As we said, we wanted to learn what they'd done, make sure that it was we were doing the good stuff for Casavea, not repeating mistakes. We wanted to look thing, and and it was listening to it was listening to the residents. It was saying you know, somebody didn't want. Um, so oh, we could do with this in our street just to improve the environment and give people a pride in where they live. I think that was the biggest thing because people were, Castlevale has always been a community, no matter what had gone on here, Castlevale has always been a community. And I think it was building on the community. There were, there were some resident groups going there, getting them involved um, and just making sure that it, it is like a little island on the Vale. I mean, somebody said, I think there's about five exits to the Vale. But it was actually looking at the, the Vale as a whole and people to have a pride back in where they live, I think that was the biggest thing. Um, yeah. and, and at the end, we did get decent homes. We got uh, people in work. We looked at the health. Um, all these figures came out with a hat at the end. I think it was a life expectancy change by about seven years or so you, you'd live longer because of what had been done on the estate. So it was, um, but I think it was just having a pride. I mean, I'm proud of what we've done on the van all the years. Now, because I think we're still doing, um, we're listening to the tenants. That's why we need tenants to get involved. We need them to come in and just take take up the baton to what was done years ago and learn, carry it forward. Did you get to meet the Queen? Yes, I did. You, you did in 1998. She came to yes, the Yes, I got she? to meet the Queen and I got to meet Princess Anne as well when Excellent. she came years before. Yeah, yeah, I met the Queen. She actually had a chat, asked me, you know, what I've been doing and well done, she said. So that was quite nice. Yeah. So, yeah. And you never forget things like that, of course. No. And, uh, <laughs> so a quick timeline here. Around about 1993, it's decided that uh, this pilot scheme is going to go ahead. The yeah. Housing Action Trust is formed, which was affectionately known by, as the HATS uh, yeah. locally. They came to the end of their tenure in 2005. Yeah. And yeah. in the lead up to 2005, the residents uh, were given the choice of whether or not to go back under the Birmingham City Council local authority mm -hmm. or yeah. move to what was then the Castle Vale uh, Community Housing Association, yeah. uh, which is we've, we've dropped the A from that uh, for, for where we are today. I mean, that, that was yeah. a that was a, a nice sort of democratic event at the time that I yeah. remember. We, we did we did lots of um, sessions where people could come along and the council would 
give their what they would offer to Castle Vale and Castle Vale Community Housing gave what they would offer to the Vale. So informing the tenants as what benefits they would get. So it was a fair process. So the council had their say, we had our, uh, and lots and lots of leaflets were done at the time about you ask these questions, these are the answers. So people were very well informed as to what what was in it for them really, which was what people wanted to know. So that when it eventually did go to the ballot, the ballot people actually were informed as to the choices. Um, it was a very good turnout. I cannot remember the figures, but I just remember it's a good turnout. And the majority of tenants, uh, the m residents chose Castle Vale Community Housing Association at that time. Um, a few went, stayed with the council, um, but that's how it started. But leading up to that, we had groups of residents actually working on all the policies and procedures by which CVCHA would run. So in an ideal world, this is what we would like for, our, for the tenants of the Vale. Um, and that was done by residents, that was uh, prospective tenants working on all this with, with outside advice. You know, we had people come in and work with us. Um, and that's how we wanted the Housing Association to run. So as part of the, the voting process, a lot of tenants had been involved with that as well. Sort of asking the questions, getting the answers, providing the information. So residents have been involved from the tenants right from the beginning as to what is good for Castle Vale, what we can offer as a tenant for Castle Vale. So. Yeah, indeed. And we're looking uh, on now, we're 15 years on from the residents making uh, their own decision. But, but what yeah. does the future hold for the Castlewell community housing? I think it's more important, as I said, I'm coming to the end of my tenure. I've just got just over a year. Um, and I think it, there's still lots to be done. We um, A few years ago, we did a community pledge by which there's a, a half a million pounds set aside to do extra things on the veil like CCTV, like working at Phoenix Curb, the sanctuary, all the rest of it. And it's actually, we still want tenants to be involved as to, it's really important for tenants to be there because we're paying the rent. We are, we are rent payers. We're making sure the money's there to do what, to look after Castle Vale. And I think it's important. We do need new, we need fresh blood. We need people to come on with new ideas. We need people to challenge. Um, um, it's, um, I mean, we, as, as residents as well, we actually interview the senior management team as well. We actually do get involved with members of staff interview panels. So you make sure that we're getting the right people working on the veil, working for us. Um, I think it's really important. We, we need new blood. It'd be great if we could, I mean, we were all young back in the day when we started, but it'd be great if we get some young, younger people on there who have a commitment to Castle Vale, who want to just keep, keep carry the baton on to the next generation because we're all getting older now. We know, I mean, I've lived here all for over 50 years. I've lived on Castle Vale, so I know what I want as a tenant, but equally, we need other people to come along and say, well, this is what we think you should be doing. You could be doing it better or improved in what we're doing. So we always need to learn. And I think more people could come forward. It would be absolutely brilliant if we could have a vote. Mm. And if anybody on Castle Vale listens to this wants to become a resident board member, how do they go about that? Um, there, there will be some advertising, obviously, through Switch Radio and also the uh, publicity going out and you just fill an application form in um it's it's all explained on there but you fill an application if we get uh enough people then we'll go to a ballot and all the tenants on castle Vale will have a vote um as to who should be the board members um and that's how it goes so you do have a choice um as a ten if you put your name forward you'd have to do like a speech uh, a speech as to not not verbally but write down how you would like this is what you would offer how you feel you know selling yourself a bit like a ballot a proper ballot paper it is um and why you think you should be chosen and then it's up to the tenants of the veil then to vote who it should be on on the panel um 
if it comes to the point where we don't get enough for an election, then it will be whoever. So I think we've got three places or two or three places. Um, it would just be, they would just go in unelected, but it's always better if you could actually have an election. So then... Absolutely. Sue, it's been uh, lovely chatting with you and going down memory lane as well about the, the redevelopment yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the rebirth of of Castle Vale as an estate yeah. and it's something that uh, we can all be proud of and all be uh, thankful that, that we've been a part of and thanks very much for joining us uh, on the show. Okay thank you.